Hey guys, it's Shyla with MyCraftSource.com and today we're going to be discussing the brand new direct to film transfer custom uploader. Um, we're calling this Layout Designer 3.0 and we're going to dive into all the brand new features and functions that this layout designer has to offer when ordering your custom transfers with us. Before we do so, I do want to go over something that's really important. A lot of you have been, might been, have been, been experiencing an error whenever you're trying to upload your transfers to us whenever you click the save project here after you've spent all the time building your gang sheets and that is super frustrating and so I'm going to literally just preface this video with getting the update out of the way so that you guys know that you are using the new layout designer 3.0 and to ensure that you are using the layout designer 3.0 version it's going to literally say that right here so if you don't see that whenever you're using the layout designer you are on the old version and you're going to receive that error so it's super important to just take these quick three little steps that i'm about to show you to make sure that you update this and then i'm going to really dive in and show you guys what all the new features and functions that the layout designer 3.0 has to offer and you're going to be super happy that you have all of these features right out in front of you to make your ordering process smooth and easy and fun and functional so thank you guys first and foremost for watching our video and hopefully this helps you know just make it an easier process for you and obviously if you're receiving those error messages we want to eliminate that completely and make sure that your orders are being submitted so really quick we're going to go ahead and force update our browser into the new layout designer how you do that is you're going to right click on your screen and I know you guys cannot see this box that pops up when you right click on the screen on this recording so I apologize for that um, but <laughs> just bear with me i'm gonna go through the steps as thorough as possible so that you guys know and understand what i'm talking about whenever you do it on your screen so again we're on the layout designer um let me just go ahead and walk you through how to get there in case you don't know so the direct to film transfer category right here is going to go to the custom direct to film transfer you're going to click on that only product there and then you're going to hit layout designer once you're in the layout designer, like I said, you should see that layout designer 3.0. And if you do not, then please follow these steps. You're going to right click on your screen and it's going to bring up a dialog box that has options such as back, forward, reload, save as, print, etc. And you're going to actually choose the very last option that says inspect. Now when you click inspect, it's going to bring up this big scary dialog box of a bunch of coding and I promise you this is irrelevant to what we're doing it's just part of the process so trust the process and we're gonna get through this together so I just need you guys to simply go up to your refresh browser and you're just gonna click your refresh browser button and it's actually gonna force out of the layout designer and then you're gonna want to click back into the layout designer and instead of clicking that refresh browser button you're actually gonna right click on it and again, you're going to get this drop down selection menu where you have normal reload, hard reload, or empty cache and hard reload. The third option is the one that you want. So you're going to hit empty cache and hard reload. And then it's going to actually force you out again. But this time you can go ahead and click off that scary box. Just hit the X there and then hit layout designer. And that is when you will see the brand new layout designer 3.0 edition. And then you're good to go. You now you're ready to order and you can really rest assured sure to know that when you spend all that time building out that gang sheet or spend all your time ordering you're going to be able to hit save project and it's not going to give you an error um, typically that error says user defined error and so if that's the case for you that is because you need to update your browser to the new layout designer so without with that out of the way let's dive in and get into the all the really cool functions and features that this new layout designer 3.0 edition brought to my craft stores and all of our customers Customers. So real quick, the first one that I want to mention, guys, is so, so exciting. We have a new My Project section where you guys can actually access all of your previous orders and reorder, clone, duplicate, edit previous orders or even orders that you're currently working on so say that you don't have a lot of time I literally just did this the other day where I was needing to build out a gang sheet but I ran out of time and I was e able to just hit save project and now I can go back and re-edit it and finish ordering when I'm ready and it's fabulous I love that feature 
So this is really, really handy, guys, the My Project section. Please utilize that. I mean, I've already utilized it multiple times. Being able to just see all your previous orders, be able to edit your previous orders, reorder them easily, like total game changer, right? So real quick, as, I, as you can see, we're on a desktop right now. And if you click My Account, it's going to be under there. And you're going to just click My Projects. But it's totally different if you're on mobile. So real quick, I'm going to pop up an image on your screen. And you're going to be able to see this mobile screenshot of what your maybe your mobile device looks like and you're actually going to see three you know those three uh, lines and then that magnifying glass which is the search function that person icon and directly to the right of that person icon is a square box um, that has you know just some indicators on it that's actually the my projects icon and so you're going to actually click that to access your my projects section on mobile device so just wanted to let you guys know that and it looks much different so of course that was important to note um okay we're going to get rid of that we're going to go back over here and we're going to continue on with our dive into what the new layout designer has to offer now, some housekeeping rules I do want to go over, and this is just really important, you guys, to ensure that you're receiving the quality and the size expectations that you want with your transfer orders. Now, we do get a lot of customers who reach out to us, and they might have received their transfer smaller than what they intended them to be. And I'm going to go over um, some quick housekeeping rules on, you know, how to ensure that your files are going to come out the exact way that you intended intended and it's really simple and easy to grasp and follow but a lot of you you know just don't quite really understand and I'm hopefully hoping that this visual will help you understand what we mean by explaining this thoroughly so buckle up guys this is going to be an in detail video I want to make sure that I explain everything to the best that I can and ensure that you guys you know are being set up for success when ordering custom transfers especially if it is your first time so as you guys can see, we have two options here. You can click into the layout designer and it's going to bring up this can blank canvas where you're actually able to just build out your own order. But we also have this image uploader option. And if you choose this, guys, it is so, so important that you know that your file is correct. What do I mean by that? Well, let's scroll down and look at this important infographic and it's going to actually show us what a good file is versus a bad file. And so that brings me to my next really important topic. It is like, what kind of file types can I actually submit, right? Because there's PNGs, there's JPEGs, there's SVGs, there's all different types of files. And it is so important that you guys send us a PNG. Not only are you sending us a PNG, but as you can see right here, it is a transparent background PNG. As you can see in this example, the background behind this file is the same color that the image is sitting on. And that's because this is a transparent file. Whereas this one over here on the right, you can see it has a big white box around it and behind that actual file. This is definitely not a transparent PNG. This is something that you would see if you are submitting a, a JPEG or even technically an SVG. So just please be aware of that. This is so, so important. Not only do you want a transparent PNG background, but there is no gaps around the design edges. And what do I mean by that? That means that you have edge to edge parameters. That means that there is no space. So as you guys can see on the bad example, there's a lot of extra white space hovering around that design. And on this good option over here, you do not have any extra space. Those, those lines around the image are right up against it. So this canvas has been cropped down to the exact file and there's no extra space. Why is this important? This is important because you want your files to come to you the size that you want them. And if you submit this to us and you put in a 10 by 10, it is measuring the entire parameter as 10 by 10. It is not measuring the design itself. So your design itself is going to come to you two inches, three inches smaller than what you had actually expected it to be. And we don't want you to receive transfer smaller than you what you intended to use. So please make sure and ensure that you are cropping your images down 
to the design itself. Now, our functions on our layout designer do not allow you to do that. So there are two really great programs that I'm going to go ahead and mention like canva.com and or Photoshop. They're great programs that allow you to actually crop your images down to the design itself with no extra space and then you're able to export as a high quality transparent PNG. So again, canva.com and Photoshop are going to be your best friends if you are working with, you know, designs and files that are not cropped down to those files um, exact dimensions. So those are the quick housekeeping rules. I do want to go ahead and give you an example of what that looks like whenever you do use the image upload option. We have literally set this thing up for sheer success for you guys. And if you just slow down and kind of pay attention to all the details and really read and, and, you know, go through the process, it really just walks you through, you know, what a good file is and uh, making sure that you're submitting something that's going to work. Now, I want to just give you a good example and a bad example here. Okay, so I have pre-designed a, a gang sheet in Photoshop. This is a transparent PNG file that is literally 22 inches by 60 inches. I set my Photoshop canvas up to that. I export it as a transparent PNG. And so I know that these dimensions and these files are in great quality and they're actually the size that the server needs to send it over to ensure that I'm going to receive a great roll of transfers. So as you guys can see, this is uploading depending on the file size. This could take a while. As you can see, it says, please be patient. This process can take up to 15 minutes. And so this also is dependent upon your internet connection. Could be faster, could be slower. Um, it's all just based on, you know, your conditions at the time. And so I'm simply just clicking that image upload. I clicked my file and we're going to wait for this to upload. Okay, so you guys can see that it is now uploaded and um, it really, truly, guys, this is so impressive. This next part that I'm going to go over is just so important for you guys to really slow down and take a minute to look at it. It literally tells you right here the width and the height of your file. And so it is giving you the exact dimensions of your file. It says it's an 18.3 by 50. And you can literally scroll down here and it's going to exactly give you the, um, the size of our pre-selected options here that you should order based on what you uploaded. So I do want to stress, guys, if you are building out files in another program, please make sure that you are exporting them and setting it up for exact dimensions that you want to pre-select and order and or if you want to order smaller than your actual one, that is okay too. Just know that you never want to stretch this beyond its capabilities. So if you upload an image and it actually tells you it's a two inch by two inch, which I've actually had happen to me before, then you're not going to want to order any of these because you're making it bigger than what the actual file is. So make sure that if you upload a 10 by 10, that you're ordering a 10 by 10 or smaller. And so um, that is just to ensure sure that you're not stretching the image beyond its resolution because then it's going to become pixelated and not good quality. So next it actually says check for background. You should see a light checkered background behind your image 
And so we do see that. We can see that that checkered image is behind our entire file. That means that this was a transparent PNG. It also lets me know that it detected a PNG file and that the image supports transparency. Now, it does also let you know for best results, select a size smaller than the dimensions that we showed you your file type is and that we have attempted to select the best size below based on your uploaded dimensions, which is why I said it pre-selected 22 by 60 for me because of the dimensions that my file type actually was. So this is a great function and a great feature, guys, if you have your file actually built with precision. <laughs> you know that it's great quality. You know that it's the exact size that you need. You know that there is no gap around your image files. And so this is really the only time that you would want to use this. Now, we're going to go ahead and refresh our screen because we actually want to start all over again. And I'm going to actually go into the layout designer and we're going to discuss whenever you're building out. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to show you guys what a bad example looks like. <laughs> So um, I have this JPEG file here, guys. I'm going to go ahead and upload that in here. It's going to take one second. And it's actually going to tell you JPEG warning. This does not allow for transparency. You can clearly see a big white box behind this image that's indicating that there is a background on this image and that you are not able to, you know, you're not able to remove this background. Like once you submit this to us, it's that that's how it's going to print. And we don't want to send you, you know, a file with a big white box around it because we know that that's not what you're expecting. So please, whenever you are using this, please make sure that you are using good files, that you're actually reading all of this, that you're paying attention to what you're providing us um, because we don't want you to be unsatisfied with what you receive at the end of the day. Okay, let's go back to where I was. We're going to refresh the screen and we're actually going to go into our layout designer. Now you can see that whenever you open the layout designer, it's going to default to that 22 by 60 inch. This is our five foot roll. I do want to go over some of these presets with you um, just to help you kind of understand what all of the abbreviations mean and where you can see that in detail. Um, but first we have a really cool function called the quick tour. And the quick tour actually allows you to kind of get a literal, literal quick tour of the layout designer and what everything means and does. So it says select the size of your design here. And this is going to literally toggle. So as you can see, as I'm clicking on these, it's changing my canvas size. So now this is a four by four. Something that I want you guys to pay attention to is these ruler guides. As you guys can see, every time I'm changing it, the ruler guides are also changing and I'm going to show you later on why these ruler guides are so important. So we are going to um, continue the quick tour. It says select the size of your design here. When you hit next, it's going to say that over here on the right is your layers panel. This is where all of your individual files are going to end up depending on how many you're importing to to order and so um, right here you would click to add those files and so when you click this it's going to ask you what you want to do there for your layer and then um, going back to the quick tour once you hit next again you're going to actually just see this very last little quick tour um, you know icon and it's just going to say click set click the save project button down below when you're finished and that save project button is literally just down here at the bottom once you are completely finished you'll hit save project and we'll go through that in just a moment as well so we're going to talk about sizes and rulers next um, because this is extremely important to make sure that you are receiving the files to your expectations and what you had in mind so we are going to leave it on the 22 by 60 just for the sake of this video like i said um, you guys can toggle to any of these and if you scroll down below you guys can see the size changing here adult 10 by 10 plus size 12 by 12 but you might not know what all these abbreviations stand for and if you aren't sure when you do select one of these, you can just simply scroll down and it's going to tell you exactly what that abbreviation stands for and what it means, okay? So um, that is an easy way to look and then you can also see the pricing there and all that good stuff. So again, we're going to stay on the 22 by 60. So we're going to go over some, um, you know, those housekeeping rules that I was talking about earlier. We're going to go over that again because I feel like I can't stress it enough. And I know that, you know, sometimes it helps to see multiple examples of what good and bad file types are. 
So when you click the layers button, you're going to hear, you're going to look at this box here that says add layer, choose image or add text or add shape. For the sake of the video, we're just going to look at the choose image option. And so as you guys can see, I'm literally able to, I could literally upload this entire gang sheet, um, but we're going to actually look at what it looks like to build out a gang sheet. Now, if I were to import this JPEG file once again, um, you're going to see that it's going to populate in here. You guys can clear, clearly see that this has a white background on it, but not only does it show you clear as day here that it has a white background, but if you scroll down below, this is so cool. It literally tells you that it's a JPEG and that it did actually pass the, um, the dimensions needed um, to order it in the size that I have it at right now. Um, and I can click the pencil icon and I can actually change the size of this. I can swap the image out. I can duplicate the layer, etc. But again, unless you want the background on this, this is not what you want to see. Okay, this is going to print with a big white box behind it. And so please pay attention to this. Um, you know, it's really, really important. If this is what you see, this is what you get. Um, and we will reach out to you guys if we do see this. We do have a quality control specialist that goes through every single custom transfer order that comes through to us. And if we do see backgrounds on files like this that just really don't make sense, we will reach out to you. And so if you do ever submit files like this and you do want the background, it is a good idea to go ahead and put in your customer notes that this is exactly how you want it. And I would literally um, type that out, yes, in your customer notes because it just saves us an extra step and you um, delaying your order, waiting for your response to ensure that you're receiving your order how you intended. So this is, again, this is a bad example if you want it to be transparent. We are going to delete this and to do so, I'm just going to click on this layer and it's going to ask, you know, it's going to pop up that same window as if you were to hit that little pencil icon here and we're going to hit delete layer. A good example looks like this. Do you see how these parameters around this image are as close as possible with very little gap? This is a great quality image. You can see that it is a transparent PNG file. And if we actually scroll down again here at the bottom, it's going to tell us that it is perfect. Now, you might see a lot of different variations here. It's not going to always tell you it's perfect. Sometimes it's going to tell you that it is just okay, that it's good, that it even passes. And it's all going to be color coded differently. But please, please, please make sure at the very, very least that it either says pass or perfect. We want perfect all the time, but we know that sometimes that just can't be the case. And so um, just please make sure that you're either getting pass or perfect. And that just really ensures that the quality of your image is going to come to you as expected with, you know, crisp quality, um, you know, good. There's not going to be any grain or haze or any of that type of situation. So again, great example here. As you can see here, as I butt this image up to the edge, if I wanted this image in a 10 by 10, I would simply just click this pencil icon and I could actually change the dimensions of this in multiple different ways. I could use this slider arrow here until I reach 10 inches. Okay. Or I could actually use these down arrow and up arrow keys until I reach 10. Or I could simply just select it, delete, hit 10, and then it's actually going to, you know, apply that as well. There's actually another way. So if you wanted to just, as you can see, I'm able to click and drag this wherever I want. You can also use these transform controls here and you can stretch it by the corners. And if you stretch it by the corners, it's actually going to hold its shape, right? It's going to constrain your dimensions to where it does not warp your image in any way. If you grab it from the sides, now you guys can see that I'm warping this image to be um, not proportional, proportionally correct. Um, and same thing with the top and the bottom. So I can stretch it up and down and I can stretch it wide and thin. So please keep that in mind. If you do accidentally grab it by these and you're messing it up, 
you're not grabbing it here to keep the constraints. There's no way to easily undo that. You would simply have to delete that layer and add it back again. Okay, so um, once we have it to size, um, my favorite way is to just click the pencil and I highlight the size and I just tell it the size that I want and then just exit off. And so now that I have a 12 inch by 12 inch, you guys can see when I put this up against um, the ruler guides, I'm actually receiving a 12 inch image. You guys can see that my design goes down to the 12 inches. That's because there's minimal gap around this file type. Now we are actually going to delete this and I'm going to actually show you a bad example of maybe you do have a transparent PNG but it has a lot of gap. You guys can see that this could easily come in much more. This edge could easily come in much more and same with the top and the bottom. So now that I have this big block of extra space around my actual file, the system is measuring this big block. And so real quick, we're going to tell it that I want this image to be Let's just go with, um, we're going to go with nine inches. Okay. So I've told it that I want it nine inches, but as you guys can see, when I put this up against the ruler guides, this outline here is what is bumped up against nine. My image is actually seven and a half. And so with this, guys, you are going to receive a file much smaller than what you intended it to be. And so this is why our customers, you know, actually receive files smaller than what they intended is because their files have a ton of gap around them and this is causing their files to be much smaller than what they wanted them to be. Now again, I'm going to go ahead and repeat myself. Our system is not capable of removing all of this extra space. You would have to then go into Canva or Photoshop or another program of your choice that allows you to actually crop those edges edge to edge of your design. So again, I just wanted you guys to see that these ruler guides are very important because um, if you want them to be precisely sized, please pay attention to that um, whenever you're importing your files. Okay, we are going to delete this because that's a bad example. Again, we don't want to work with that. Uh, we would want to go crop that image edge to edge. So here we are. We're going to go back in with our good example, little Arkansas Razorback file here. And I'm going to show you guys some other really cool functions and features that the Layout Designer 3.0 offers. And that is when you hit the pencil icon, you can actually duplicate this multiple times. I can tell it I want five of them and hit duplicate and it's actually going to duplicate it that many times. Now it's not going to actually nest them you know exactly where you want them or put them exactly where you want them so you're going to have to do some organizing on your gang sheet um, but you know it doesn't take long especially when you're able to just click and drag it doesn't take long at all and so you're able to really fit those in you know, as close as possible to each other with making it simple enough when you receive it, you're able to, you know, trim them apart. And so uh, this is a really easy way to just duplicate your image as many times as you want. Now, um, some other really cool features is that maybe you're really trying to squeeze something in and you want to make sure that you have enough uh, space. You're able to actually rotate um, really easily by clicking those rotate icons. You can actually do that 360 degrees all the way around. Um, and that actually lets you, um, you know, actually put stuff in a little bit tighter and closer together to save room on your gang sheet. So you're also able to, um, mirror. So you can mirror designs, um, when you send us your files, we don't want them mirrored or backwards. So um, if this would be handy if you had a previous image for a sublimation design that was pre-mirrored and now you need to order it not mirrored. And so this would be easy to just import that file and then mirror it um, back correctly. You can actually flip them um, vertically as well. So you can flip them up and down. And then if you want to swap this image, say you say you don't want it anymore, instead of actually deleting the layer, adding a new layer, you can quickly, 
quickly hit swap image. It allows you to select a new file and it's literally just going to populate that in right there as you had it. It literally saves all of your presets as well. So as you guys can see that was mirrored um, and now you just edit it and size it how you want. So very cool features there. We love um, all of these improvements that we have made happen for you guys. Um, building out a gang sheet is so easy now <laughs> at um, right here on our website. So you're able to just build these and submit them. It's so, so nice. So um, we've talked about sizing. We've talked about gap. We've talked about all of the good options to rotate, duplicate. Um, real quick on the duplicate option, this does have a maximum amount. So if you were to tell this you wanted 100 um, and it simply didn't know where to fit it because there wasn't enough blank space to fit them, it's going to stack them on top of each other and that can kind of be messy sometimes. So I do want to say that this duplicate image option is not invincible and you want to really make sure that you're paying attention to uh, you know, what it's capable of and not stretching it beyond its means or capabilities. So um, another really cool feature that I want to talk about is this background color. Say you wanted to see, say you wanted to see what this file was going to look like on a black shirt. And you can actually change this entire background canvas to black. You can change it to any color that you want. You can change it to purple, blue, green, pink, you know, all the colors, which is really cool. Um, and just really see what your file is going to look like on that garment or that item that you're putting it on. I do want to stress that this background color is for viewing purposes only. So when you do save your project, you're going to see that this blue background goes away and it's actually going to print transparent. So don't worry there. It is actually for just a really handy tool, um, you know, to just make sure that your files are going to look exactly how you expect them whenever you receive them and put them on your item. So once you've reached um, your destination, if you will, you've reached the end of your project. Say that you have this entire thing filled up and you are ready to check out. As you guys can see here, for every single layer that I added, it is telling me that every single layer is perfect and that's what we want to see. Again, we want to see perfect or pass. And um, I just want to stress that you guys need to name your projects before you hit save project. Now that we have that really cool My Projects feature where you guys can reorder and edit previous projects, clone, duplicate, all that good stuff, you want to make sure that you name your projects so that you can easily go find them in your library of projects. So just give it a quick name and hit save project. Depending on how many files you uploaded, this could take a long time. So be you know, just be patient with it. Again, this could be dependent on your internet connection as well. So we're all ready to go. As you guys can see, like I said, that blue background did not carry over. This is our proof and it's showing us that it is on transparent background. You're going to see it again exactly how you want it. And the next really cool feature is this download canvas button that is so nice. It's actually going to download your entire file to your device so that you have it forever and that if you ever need it again in a different circumstance or maybe, you know, something got lost in translation along the way, you have a hard solid copy of all that hard work that you just did on the website. So always download your canvas. And then once you've hit save, you've downloaded it, you've named it, just click, click add to cart and you're literally ready to check out. So again, guys, we are super excited to bring you all of these really cool features and functions to the layout designer. It's a total game changer for building out your gang sheets on our website and, you know, just making sure that you're updated to this layout designer 3.0. I walked you through those three simple steps in the beginning of this video, making sure that you are on the current version so you don't receive those errors after all of your hard work. And once you have your order in the cart and you're ready to check out, it is just as simple as that, then your order is going to be in process. And in the, in the um, My Project section, you're actually able to see your orders in the print queue as well, which is a really cool function. You can see that your order is printing, it's in process, all of that good stuff. So be sure to really utilize this feature. Because like I said, it is so, so cool. It has so much to offer. So thank you guys so much. I do want to mention one really quick thing. There was a few things that I told you that our layout designer was not capable of. 
that first feature was cropping that extra space out around your image. It cannot do that. It can also not remove backgrounds. So if you were to upload that file um, that had that background like this, you're not able to remove this white background on our website. You will have to leave our website. But I do want to give you a really good resource. It is erase.bg. This is a free program for you guys to actually upload that image and remove the background. And you can actually export it as a high quality image, whereas some of the other free programs actually don't allow you to export as a high quality unless you pay per image. So this one's really nice. Um, and it's like, again, guys, it's not perfect. It's not invincible. Um, sometimes you're going to get great results and sometimes you're not going to get re good results. But I did want you to know about this feature because it does allow you to export up to 5,000 by 5,000 pixels and in a PNG format, which is huge. That is so, so great. Um, it's going to actually make sure that you're getting, you know, a good quality image to us for your printing needs. So, I think that is all I have for you guys on this video today. Again, I know I said it was lengthy. I just wanted to make sure that I went through every single thing to show you guys, you know, how easy it is to really order those custom gang sheets and order your custom transfers with us. We do have, you know, a phone number that you can call. You can email us at any time. Reach out to us on social media if you have any questions or concerns along the way and somebody is going to reply to you and help you through the process. So, again, thank you guys for trusting my craft source with your custom transfer orders and continuing to do business with us and considering doing business with us. We really hope that this video was informational and helpful. And um, that is all I have for you guys today. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.